Welcome back to this second video in the series on Mastercam Milturn tool locators. In this video, we're going to take a look at the beginning of the process, which is the model preparation. We're going to take a look at some requirements of the model preparation. The first being each tool locator must be a single solid entity. You may find that occasionally when you download tooling from a certain manufacturer's website that it may come in as several different elements. Now we can only select a single solid entity for a tool locator, so we have a couple options. First, we can either remove the elements if they're not needed, or we can combine them into a single solid entity. The next requirement is that each solid entity must also be a closed solid body. So what you'll find is when we're creating tool locators, we can't use surfaces or wireframe. We are always going to be working with a solid body, and it can't be an open sheet body. It must be a closed solid body. We'll take a look at that in Mastercam. The next is that the attachment point of the tool locator must be located at Mastercam Top WCS Origin. Another thing that you'll find is that all the work done in tool locators will always be relative to the Mastercam Top WCS. The orientation of each locator will be relative to Mastercam Top WCS based on the axis combination that it's used for. As you may or may not be aware, there are four axis combinations that we utilize in Mastercam, and that would be upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right. Next, we want to take a look at some other steps that might be recommended. Now, not all of these are required, but they can help further on in the process. The first is we want to simplify any overly complex features. You'll find that certain models downloaded from a manufacturer's website might have much more detail than others. Things like bolts, coolant lines, and even coolant passageways that run through the model can create a lot of extra complexity to the solid model, but have no real benefits to the simulation process. By taking the time to simplify these features or remove them, you'll find that the simulation can actually run a little more quickly and efficiently. So it is sometimes worth taking the time to remove those extra features that aren't really necessary. The next thing that we can do is we can establish the color of each locator. Now generally speaking, the color is going to be the same for all your locators, and typically you're going to match that color to the ones that are already created in your library. This just helps us again further on in the process when we go to define the locator, then we can just tell it to use the color that's already been established. Next, we want to establish a unique level in Mastercam for each locator. We can add more than one locator to a level if we choose to. Typically you would do this when we, you have more than one orientation of the same locator, but you can also just as easily separate them all onto their own individual levels. What you'll find is that by separating them, when we go to define each locator, it makes the process of selecting the correct locator much easier. We can also add some wireframe points at this point to each locator level. These points are going to represent where the tools will actually be attached to that locator. This could be more than one point if a locator can locate more than one tool. By putting the points in now, it just sets everything up so that when we're defining it in a later process, we have an easily selectable point to define where each of the tools will be positioned. The last item is really just a recommendation, and it may not be necessary for most people. Sometimes it can be helpful to add tool identification markings onto the solid model. This would be for instances where you might have a lot of holders that actually all look the same and are a little harder to differentiate. Now, when you're selecting those in Mastercam, they'll each have their own names or identification, but once you're in the simulation, it might be a little bit harder to differentiate them. So, by adding the identification markers onto the solid model, it makes it a little bit easier to 
clearly identify that the correct holder has been used in the simulation process. Again, this is totally up to your own preferences and is just an extra step that can be useful for some. Before we start opening up some tool locator models, let's take a quick look at the different axis combinations in Mastercam to make sure that we understand the orientation that our tool locators will be placed in. As you know, we have the upper left, lower left, upper right, and lower right axis combinations. I've created a simple illustration here. We have our chuck, our part, our turret, and then our tool holder. So in this case, I am looking at the upper left axis combination. You can see that the tool will be loaded into the holder right here, machining on the left spindle. If we take a look at a top view, we can see that when our, we define the tool lay, locator orientation in Mastercam, it's going to be facing the left, and then the tool locator itself is always going to be on the lower side of the x-axis when we're on an upper turret. So if I jump over to the upper right, we can see that now the holder has been flipped the other way. Now we're facing the right spindle, but we're still on the upper turret, so again, our holder is going to be on the lower side of X. If we jump down to the lower left side, we can see now the holder is again machining on the left spindle, but now the, the locator itself is going to be located on the upper side of the X axis, and that would be for any time we're working with a lower axis combination or a lower turret. Jumping to the lower right, we can see the same thing. Now we've just flipped the holder to the opposite side to machine on the right spindle. And again, our locator is on the upper portion of the x-axis. That's the main thing to take from this is really uh, the orientation where the holder faces, whether it's working on the left or the right, and then what side of the x-axis the holder is positioned on, whether it's working on an upper or a lower turret. Another thing we might want to do before we start opening up models and organizing them and orientating them is to take a look at the GMD that we're currently working with and get an idea on what tools are already in it, how they're named, and how they're organized onto the levels. So in order to open up a GMD file, there's actually several ways to do this, and we'll kind of touch on each of those as we go through this whole process. In this example, I'm just going to go to the Machine tab, to the machine definition, and I'm going to select the Milturn Component Library option. This will open up the Milturn Component Manager, which then allows me to hit an Open, and I can go and browse for the specific GMD that I'm looking for. Now I've already copied the GMD that I'm using in this example to another location. So here I just have a generic uh, upper and lower turret machine, and I'm going to open up the inch GMD. Once it opens up, we can see here that we have the upper and lower tool groups. If I expand that, you'll see that I have the upper turret defined first. We'll take a quick look inside of the upper turret, just so you're understanding what's inside of it. Looking at the tool locator positions, we talked previously about the tool or about the attachment position. Now the attachment position is where all the locators are going to attach to the turret. So this portion of the GMD is defining that we have 12 positions on the turret. They're equally spaced. They're all active positions currently with a checkbox next to them. And then the attachment position, if I modify that, I can actually see that this attachment position accepts tools on every single position and this is the actual position of where this will attach to the turret in Mastercam. Now this part of the process is not something you'll likely get into but it's worth noting just so you understand how everything works together. Next we're going to go ahead and close out the GMD manager so we can take a look at the tools that are actually located on the different levels within this file. So by closing the GMD, I can now go to my Levels tab, and here I can see all of the different solid models that are inside of this GMD and see how they're all organized onto levels. Now the main thing that we're looking for at this point 
is we want to take note of the different levels that are already being used inside of this GMD. When we go to import or merge our new models into this GMD, we'd like to merge them in on new levels. That way they don't end up on top of other models. And that just makes the process a little bit harder. So again, we might just take note of the levels that are in this file and decide what level number we want to start with when we create our own models and start to organize them so that when we import them, they come in exactly how we want them to. The other thing too that we can take a look at here is just the naming conventions. Now, this part of it is really up to you. And the reason to name things descriptively like this is just so when we're going through the process of adding the locators, we, we're sure that we're selecting the correct level for the correct orientation of that locator. Next, we're going to take a look at some practical examples of some different types of tools that we've downloaded from a manufacturer's website. So in this case, I have three different step files. Now these are all from different manufacturers, and I'm just going to look at some different examples of types of tools you might bring in and talk about some of the things that you might want to modify on those models before we start to use them as locators. Now the other thing to note is that different websites may give you options to download a different type of a solid model. Generally speaking, a step file is always a good option, and you'll probably want to avoid an STL because an STL model is not as easy to work with. It doesn't give you selectable features, and thus it will be much more difficult to simplify an STL file compared to a step file. The first tool that we'll look at here is just a standard milling holder. This tool would be utilized to mill on the face of the main spindle or orientated to mill on the face of the subspindle. Now the first thing that we want to check for is just to see how many solid models we have. Now if we have our level manager open, I can see right away that it's indicating that I have one entity. So that's a good sign that we have just have one solid model. I can also pick the model and right click on it to analyze it. Here I can see that I have one solid and it is a closed solid body. As you remember from our earlier video, we want to make sure that we're always working with a good closed solid body. We can't use surfaces and we don't want any open sheet bodies. Next, we'll just kind of take a look at this tool. Now this tool itself I would say is really not overly complex though there are some features that could possibly be removed just to simplify things a bit more. For example, the lower portion of this tool will be located inside of the turret, so none of that will be visible and plays no role in the simulation process. So by slicing this model and removing some of the lower portion of this, we could actually simplify things a little bit more. The same would be true for the coolant nozzle your coolant nozzle may be pointed in a totally different direction or may not really be a concern for any collision avoidance. So in this case, we could remove the coolant nozzle and the bolt just to simplify things a little bit more. We'll use this tool as an example to show you some of the options in Mastercam that can allow you to simplify or remove certain features. In this example, I'm going to use some of the tools in model prep. Let's take a look at the coolant nozzle first. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use the modify feature option. In this case I've selected that and I want to remove the feature. Now all I need to do is just start selecting portions of the model to see if Mastercam will let me remove them. By, you can see some different options you have by selecting things in different manners. In this case I'm just going to double click here and I can see it's highlighted the whole nozzle so I can go ahead and hit apply and you can see very easily Mastercam is able to just remove that feature. As I continue to double click through here you can see that just with a few clicks I've removed that entire coolant nozzle. Now this could also be true for these slots on the the nut that holds in the collet. It's not hurting anything but this also won't make any difference as far as verification because this will be spinning. So we could also 
double click on these features and remove them as well very easily. Now that I'm done with the simplification of the model, I'm going to start to position the tool onto different levels and orientate it for each of the axis combinations that I'll use this in. Again, in this example, we're looking at an upper and lower turret, so we actually have four positions that this tool will be used in. We can see here that we're in Mastercam's top view and that our model is not orientated correctly. Essentially, this needs to be laying flat so that the tool is either on the lower side of X or the upper side of X depending on the turret that we're working with. I can put two models on the same level and it really is up to you how you organize them. In this case I'm going to put both of the left spindle models on one level and both the right spindle models on another level. So I'll start off, I have just the one copy of my holder. I'm going to start to orient this first for the upper. So what I'm going to use is the transform dynamic. I'll select my tool. And then I need to pick a rotation point. Now it's important to note that when you bring the holders in, typically they're already positioned to the origin point of where that tool will mount to the turret. So that's the, the bottom face of the holder and typically in the center of whatever locates that tool. We want to make sure that this position never moves because that's the same position that will be used in Mastercam to locate this tool onto the attachment point. So in this case, when I'm doing rotations, I always want to make sure I'm doing that from the origin. From here, all I need to do is rotate this tool into position. So if I'm working on the upper turret, the turret is up in this portion or this quadrant, and I need to rotate the holder down to the lower side of the x-axis. So I'll grab this, bring it down 90 degrees, and in this case, I have it set to move that model. Now I'm ready to just create my second copy, which is essentially if I want to use this same tool on the left spindle but on the upper turret. So all I need to do here is select the model again, go back to my transform, I'll do dynamic again, using the same origin point. And in this case, I'm going to make a copy and I'll grab this and rotate it 180 degrees. And now I have a copy of both tools for the left spindle. Now that those are complete, I also want to do it the same thing for the right spindle. So what's probably easiest is I'll just select both models. I'll right click and I'll just simply copy them to the other level. In this case, it's set to copy and I have that set up for level 1001. I'll turn off the main level, and then all we need to do is take both of these holders and now rotate them around to face the right spindle. So I'll just select both, use transform, dynamic, again, always using the origin, and then I simply rotate 180 degrees, and before I hit apply, I just want to remember to set it back to move. That way it actually rotates the model and moves them instead of creating another copy. Then I'll green check to finish. And now I have my tool holder set up for both the left side and the right side. So again, just jumping back to a top orientation, we can see these are our right spindle side and these are our left spindle side tools. The other thing I can do before I finish up here is I can go ahead and reset the colors on this model. As you can see, when I imported this, it actually brought along some of the colored features from the manufacturer. Now when we select a tool for simulation, it's only going to apply a single color to the model. So we can reset that now and actually apply the color that we want to use at a later point. Now when you've when it brings in colors like this, you're typically going to need to clear this with the model prep color clear all option. So I'll select clear all, select the models that I have, and selection, and there you can see right away it's cleared all those colors. The underlining color now has been applied to the tool. So now 
If I want to change that, I can just right click, go to my solid manager, and select the appropriate color that I want to use for those holders. Before we finish with this model and move on to the next one, we also want to consider where the tools are going to attach into this locator. Now each locator has a specific point where the tool will attach and essentially that's typically the back of the tool. So for a turning holder, that's the back of the holder itself. For a milling tool, that's going to be the back of the end mill or the drill. So we want to think about where that position is going to be relative to this part. We know that it's going to be in the center of the milling holder, but we want to determine how deep we wish that attachment point to be. Now in some cases you may have a holder that clearly bottoms out at a certain point, and that may be a logical place to place your attachment point. But in cases where you don't have a clearly defined position, you may want to utilize a standard value that you use for all your holders, that way you're able to properly define your tools and get them to stick out the right amount in Mastercam. Typically I like to use a value of 2 inches. So in this case we would just want to add a position that's at the center of each of these that's 2 inches deep. So let's start off on the right spindle one. We need to first call up a tool plane, so I'm going to go to an isometric view here. And then I'm going to go to my planes, and I want to look at this from the right side. So I'll select my right side plane, and then an easy way to define the point at a certain depth is to actually go into a 2D mode. So the first thing that I'll do is right click here, and I'll grab the Z coordinate of a point. I want to grab the position of the face of this holder first. So this gives me the position of that face. It's going to be the same on this holder as it is on the other one. And now I just want to take that value and I want to subtract the two inches that I want the point to be. Now that I have my depth set, I can snap it into 2D mode and I can draw my points. Now before I draw the points, I just want to make sure that I've selected the level that I'm on, which is the right spindle, so that's now active. I'll just go to wireframe, point, grab the center, and grab the center. And if I go to a wireframe real quick, we can see there's my point at each of those depths. Now we just need to do the same thing to the right side. So what I've done here is just in my levels, I switched over to the left spindle tools. And the other thing is I already have the 2D value or the 2D depth set, so I just need to switch my plane as well. Instead of being on the right side now, I'm going to use the left plane. So because this height is going to be identical from either side, I don't need to change that value. Now I can simply add my points to this side. And I can just verify briefly that the points are there. Now that I'm done, I can finish this out, go back to a solid view, and now I'm ready to save this part file. Now what I'd recommend is that you take this file, save it, and then we're essentially going to bring in the other tools into this same file and continue to organize them onto levels. To bring in my next tool, I'm just going to do File, and instead of Open, I'm going to use Merge. Select all file types. Now I'm going to move on to the double turning holder. Once the model comes in, it's probably going to come in on its own unique level. So what I'll do is just switch to that level, turn off my other holders, and I'll start to analyze this new model that I brought in. In this case, I can see right away it's telling me the number of entities is 5, so I know I don't have a single model. By clicking on the main feature, I can see that everything highlights except for the coolant nozzles. So in this case, a simple solution would probably be to just delete the coolant nozzles. Now we could cap off the holes, or we could add these to the current model, but they shouldn't really serve too much purpose in the simulation process. So in this case, I'll just select each of the models for the coolant nozzles and just delete them. Now there's also 
a little bit of complexity here to these holes where the coolant nozzle was, this would be a very good candidate for things that we might want to remove or simplify. I'm not going to go through all those steps with this file as it could take a while, but this is definitely one of those scenarios where simplifying or removing these holes and all those features could really help this model perform better when we're using it in simulation. The main thing that I want to touch on with this model specifically is the fact that this has clamps that can be placed on either side of the holder. So just keep in mind when you download a turning holder from a manufacturer that you're sure that you double check and make sure that the clamps are on the proper side as the one that you actually have on the machine. If you have a different configuration, you may need to modify this model to suit what you actually have on your machine. To save some time, I've already moved the model to its own level, and I've also set it up for both the upper turret and the lower turret in the correct orientations. Next, we just want to take a look at where we're going to place our tool attachment points. On a turning holder, our insert is going to be on the same side as the clamp. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our attachment point is always on the clamp side or the insert side. The attachment point also should be on the back face of wherever the tool will sit. So basically it needs to intersect with this back face, the portion of the clamp where the tool will touch, which is essentially this little flat here, and then the bottom of the holder. Typically the attachment point of a turning tool is going to be set at the back of the holder and then from there the length of the tool will essentially dictate how far it sticks out. Now technically you could make the attachment point a certain distance from the outer face but you'll find that most standard turning holders set up in Mastercam are already set up to attach to the very bottom of the actual tool locator itself. So all we need to do here is just apply our point to the proper location. Now in this case it should be pretty easy because we know that the attachment point of the tool is always going to be on center or at least in this case it's going to be on center. So what we can do is just go to a top view. We'll use our 2D plane again and we'll just set this to zero. Now all I need to do is go to my point And essentially I want it to be the bottom of the holder. So I'm just going to pick this point at the very bottom and you'll see that that's projected down to uh, the center line basically. So this same point can technically be used for both the upper and the lower turret. So now all we need to do is just rotate around and select a point as well for the other side. Again, I'll just pick that intersection there and it draws our point right down at zero. So we have our two points for this holder. The last tool that I brought in, I specifically want to take a look at it because of how the tool came in from the manufacturer. Now in this case it's a cutoff tool with a blade style holder and the insert. What I can see is that it brought in two separate levels. One of them is the insert and the other one is the actual holder and the blade itself. Now the blade is actually going to be our holder in Mastercam, we have the holder and an insert for a turning style tool. So we'll need to make sure that those are not part of the tool locator model. So in this case, right away I can delete the insert because I know that I'm not going to need that. Next, we need to start separating the blade from the rest of this tool locator. Now I'm going to step through this utilizing the model prep tools again just to illustrate how Mastercam can be used to remove this feature. Now, you may have other CAD systems at your disposal and that you're more familiar with and it's perfectly fine to modify this model outside of Mastercam and then bring it in after you've finished. But let's show you how you can do this in Mastercam. So I'll jump over to the Model Prep tab and I'm going to use the same Modify Feature option. Right away I can start attacking some of the more simplistic features of the part, like double clicking on this bolt hitting apply removes it very quickly. Same thing with these holes. I can select both of those and remove them very quickly. Now some of these other features might be a little more difficult. If I double click here, 
you'll notice it's not picking the entire feature, just that one surface. So what I may want to do here is select both of these, hit apply, and we can see that gets rid of that portion of it. Now the other thing too that I can do is actually use some of the other options here to select more features on both sides of the part. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of this one just so that we're starting off with an equal element on both sides of this tool. And then I'm going to start working on this inner portion here. Now what I can do is if I hold down Shift, Control, and then I click on different features, this will actually allow me to move around. I'll need to individually select each one of these features, but what you can see is that it's also selecting the same feature on the opposite side of the tool, and that's what the, the control shift click option gives me. So once I have all those features picked, I can hit apply, and you can see right away it gets rid of all that. Now I can kind of go through and remove the rest of this tool, just selecting different features here. Again, I'm using the shift click option. That way, anything that is common on the other side is also picked. So I can see it picked most of the faces, but there's still a couple missing. And there I have all the rest of the faces selected. And I can finish it with the apply button. There we can see that it's removed everything that I don't need, which is the blade and the insert of the holder. Once that's done, I can switch to an isometric view, and now I can see that the holder is actually already in the correct orientation if it was going to be used on the upper turret. Now in this case, with a cutoff tool, you may not use your cutoff tool on both the upper turret, lower turret, facing the left, and facing the main. So there's no reason to create different orientations of the tool unless you know you're going to use them in those orientations. So in this case, I may always use this cutoff tool on the upper turret and the holder will either be on this side or on the opposite side. So all I need to do is just orient this in a single orientation and I should be all set. In conclusion, we've gone through all the model preparation steps. We've started by opening up each of the models that we're going to be working with and first ensuring that we only have a single solid closed body entity. We also copied them to different levels and organized them based on their orientation and where they'll be used on the machine. We made multiple copies where needed to represent each orientation that that individual tool locator will be used in. We also added points to each of the levels to represent where each of the tools will actually mount into each locator. That'll help us a little later on in the process. We also establish the color of each of the models, again, just to help us later on in the process. Now that everything's done, we've just saved this into a single part file, and that'll make it a little bit easier for us when we're ready to merge in these holders into our GMD.